Hello and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, sadly, we can't meet together as a church, especially this being the Holy Week and the lead up to Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Uh, so we thought we would produce the short and little videos uh, just to help us to reorientate our hearts and to focus and to gaze at our Lord Jesus Christ and all that he has done for us. Uh, today, uh, we are in Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 to 17. Uh, you, maybe you do know this story quite well. Jesus cleanses uh, the temple. Uh, maybe you have been to Rome. When I went to Rome, I was completely, completely blown away by all the architecture and the food and the culture. And if you've been to Rome, one of the main thing or one of the main attraction is the v Vatican, isn't it? Um, and what a magnificent architecture, paintings and arts, paintings by Michelangelo and Raphael and the Sistine Chapel. And the Sistine Chapel, I'm told, that uh, gets visitors up to 20,000 a day, which is quite a lot of people. Uh, so you can imagine Jerusalem being a bit like the Vatican, hot, humid, crowded, smelly, uh, people everywhere. Um, and we're told that Jesus went into the temple after the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So here is Jesus in the temple. He was busy and Jesus meets people uh, selling uh, animals, pigeons and doves uh, for the sacrifice. Uh, people needed an animal or a pigeon or a dove uh, to offer uh, a sacrifice in the temple. And where can they get this animal or bird? in the temple, three times probably the normal price. Um, the temple authority was making money. I mean, what a great business. And there would have been uh, Jewish people from Jerusalem, from Judea, from the diaspora, the Greek-speaking Jews. And we're told that Jesus is not happy about this. Jesus is angry. He overturns the money changers. They chases them all away, verse 12. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. So Jesus clearly is not happy about this. And Jesus says in verse 13, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Uh, so Jesus quotes Isaiah 56, verse 7, the first part. And in the second part, Jesus quotes from Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11. Again, a small but great example of Isaiah 56 and Jeremiah 7 uh, pointing us to Christ and the fulfillment of it. Uh, we see here in uh, Matthew chapter 21, 12 onward, that the temple is not functioning as God intended it to be. Rather than being a house of prayer, rather than being a place where people would see God and his will, it has become a business. And look who is offended by Jesus' action. The chief priests and the teachers of the law. In other words, the religious leaders were offended by what Jesus has done. They were meant to be the one who would have understood what the temple was for. They were meant to be the guides. They were meant to be the religious leaders. Instead, they were offended by what Jesus has done. The temple was certainly religious. They were doing religious things. They looked religious. But somehow they completely managed to miss Jesus, to whom the sacrifice and the temple pointed to. On the other hand, look who is coming into the temple, verse 14. And 15, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. And the children were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. What a contrast, isn't it? The people who know and memorize their scriptures, the laws, were offended by Jesus. And on the other hand, the broken, the hurting, the little children recognize as Jesus, the true temple. They recognize who Jesus is. The leaders, the religious leaders were angry. They were indignant when they heard the children shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. And Jesus says to them, have you read this book called Psalms? Ever heard of it? Jesus then quotes from Psalm 8 verse 2. 
where the children are praising the Lord Yahweh and Jesus saying, yep, that is me. That's right. The Yahweh of Psalm 8 is me. And these little children are actually right. I am he. So the religious leaders and people missed Jesus. They were offended and indignant. On the other hand, the broken, the hurting, the children recognized Jesus. They rejoiced with him and in him. And I want to leave us with these two application points, if I may. First, are we in danger of missing Jesus? Are we in danger of elevating our liturgies and our rituals of our church life, especially during the Holy Week, that we almost forget who we are celebrating? Secondly, are we praising and rejoicing in Jesus Christ? A God no longer dwells in tents or tabernacles or physical temple. He dwells fully and forever in his son, Jesus. Jesus is the temple. The temple no longer is a place. The temple is a person, Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus. When Jesus dwells in his church with his people. Matthew 28 verse 20. Jesus' last words were this. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He is with us. He is for us. Jesus is with us.